This is definitely not a traditional uh, smoking environment the way native peoples would do. Native peoples would either put their, uh, their hides or their buckskin in the roof of their houses, whether it was a, uh, a longhouse, um, uh, a chicky, a wiki up, they put their, their hides in the roof uh, or the top where the smoke would go, and it would smoke it there, or more modern methods of smoking hides, or you would sew the hide together and put it over a fire. I find that I do a lot of hides and I do a lot of big hides, so that really doesn't work for me. So this is pretty much just a kind of a contraption that we use for cross-cut and felling saw competitions that we don't use much anymore. That works really good for a, uh, a smoking rack, if you will. So the thing I want to smoke the most is the bear, but I'm going to smoke a buckskin top I made earlier this year. I'm just going to throw it here. I could put it up with coat hangers if I wanted to, but uh, this will work just as good. And then I've got a sheep hide that I just finished tanning out that I'm going to put up here as well. So I'm going to throw these guys over like this. And in a second, I'm going to put a tarp over this to uh, increase the amount of air circulation so the smoke stays inside here. I'm basically going to make a little, a little dome with it. Um, a couple really important things about, uh, about the materials that you're smoking with. And again, everybody's got an opinion about this, and if you ask 100 people, you're going to get 100 different ways to do it. Um, the wood we're going to be smoking with is all hardwood. Uh, I've been using oak and hickory uh, exclusively for years and years and years and years and years, and I like what that turns out. I like the smell. I like the color. Works just fine, but I've been using cherry a lot for the past about two years, and it does give a very distinctive kind of maroon burgundy color to the hide and makes it smell a little bit like cherry. It's really, really cool. So uh, we've got a couple different different things that we're going to be using here. Um, really important that when we're doing this is that we don't get a flame. We don't want a flame. You want um, combustion. You don't want uh, 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 for the, the, the fire to actually catch because it gets too hot and you can burn your hides. So you just want it to smolder for, uh, for days and days and days. Copious amounts of water on board. It's been really cold, so this is kind of frozen, but there's also little chunks of wood in there. This is the consistency of what I'm going to be looking for. This is the, the inside of a stump. I want to be able to break this apart with my hands relatively easily. Now, I do like to knock all the bugs out of here. I don't want to burn anything, melt anything, or smoke anything out that I don't have to. So I try to knock all the insects and things out of there. Uh, you want loamy, rotten, really rotten wood. A piece of locust. This is breaking apart relatively easily. I do have a hatchet here that I'm going to use to break the rest of the stuff up. I've got a couple pieces of nice, really rotten cherry that I can break off like this. So we're going to be using this. I'm going to break it into a little smaller pieces. I've already got a bunch pre-prepped in here. And then some other rotten pieces of oak. Break these off and put it in the bin, in the rotten wood bin. Now I'm going to water this down really good. Copious amounts of water. Should this thing flame up, you can put it out. You don't want to burn your hide, especially as much time and effort as you put into it. Kind of like this. I'm going to go fill this guy back up into one of the ponds here before we get started. Got a couple extra pieces of cherry here. They're a little bit harder than I would like, but I'm just going to knock a couple pieces, bits and pieces here and there off. For them as well. As you can see, we do a lot of smoking hides right here. This is all residual pieces left over. All rotten, rotten heartwood. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the tarp over this whole mess. This old beat up tarp will do just fine. Okay, here we are. We are essentially done. Other than a couple little minor uh, uh, aesthetic things and uh, taking her to the uh, to the salon for a little little hair cleaning, we're done. Um, 
took a little bit longer than we had thought originally. The weather didn't cooperate. It got a little bit warm. So uh, we had to put everything on hold so the hide didn't slip. And now it's really cold. So the tanning process slows down considerably more, um, decreasing the probability that you're going to have hair slippage. So this is what we've got now. She's been smoked about two days. Probably smoke her a little bit more, get a little bit darker color. We had a really, really heavy winds the, uh, the past couple days. So the smoking didn't go as perfect as possible. But this is where we're at. Head is a little bit more gargoyle-ish than I would normally do. Uh, I took the uh, bottle out a little bit sooner than I normally would. But if you, you're really, really careful about that and get all different kind of recycled jars and bottles and things like that, you really can shape the head out to look at just like it did when it was on the animal. And the head and the neck sometimes take a little bit longer to tan out. And in my experience with bears, you don't do anything. You just wait. You just keep them in a relatively cold environment until they stop uh, uh, feeling rubbery and they, they stiffen up. So she's done. And one of the best ways I can tell is I pull on the hair. The hair doesn't move at all. I'm not, I'm not getting any hair slippage whatsoever. Still got a little bit of brain solution to clean off the ears. I'll just get a really, uh, really stiff uh, plastic brush. Don't use metal. Use a plastic brush to clean the brain solution off. And uh, smells like smoke. In here, still a little rubbery, but almost done. This is what the paws look like from the inside. You can see I heavied up on the brain solution there, so I didn't have to worry about this area. And this is what they look like on the top side. There's the pad, and there are the claws. The entire hide is kind of like yay. He's a little big. He's a little bigger than me. If I wanted to, and it was cold. There's your blanket right there. There's a blanket right there. I've got two bears. Uh, this is going to be pretty easy to deal with. So, <clears throat> this is where we're at. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something. Uh, I hope this was helpful. You don't have to go to a taxidermist and pay thousands of dollars to get a to get a bear hide tan down when you can do it at home for probably about $25 by yourself. Um, feel free to check our website, uh, www.northamericanbushcraftschool.com, and then our Facebook page with the same name. We do do hide tanning classes if you're interested in uh, learning a little bit more about what I refer to as board tanning or making proper buckskin. Um, enjoy yourselves. Wisdom in the wilderness, you